Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Good? All right. I'll try to keep speaking up. Um, so here's the title of the talk, How to Make More Time and Money with Proven Outsourcing. And there's a whole lot of tips in here about how to just work with people. All right? Not necessarily as people on your staff, but family and all that stuff. All right. I'm Dave, as you probably know by now. So I live in Irvine, California. I've been married for 35 plus years. Wife and two kids, daughter-in-law. I was a semiconductor engineer and corporate executive for 30 years, uh, managing teams from across the globe. I've got six patents, which is pretty cool. And I've done WordPress for about five plus years, been programming all my life. I've done a couple of iPhone apps um, with my business partner, can't see him down here, Larry. We've coached 100 plus entrepreneurs in different types of businesses, technical, non-technical, all that. And that's um, a lot of fun. And I volunteer in the local jail ministry down in Orange County. Uh, we don't have prisons there, there's jails. And we go in and take uh, church services to them. So it's a blast. Okay, questions. If you guys have questions, I'll take them at the end because i got a lot of stuff to go through here. But I'm here all day today. Lunch is coming up. Uh, grab me. Buy me lunch out here. <laughs> and, yeah, on you, obviously. And then, um, but I'm here all day. And I'll give you a link to the slides at the end so you don't have to take pictures or anything. And, and while you're going through this, if you're going to write some stuff down. Don't write down as much of what I say, but write down how it comes across to you, what makes sense to you. Okay, because as you come out of this, you can get a whole bunch of information, but maybe take one or two or three things um, with you from the talk. <clears throat> All right. All right. Here's the overview of what we're going to talk about. True business definition. What it is, why you should outsource, and to whom, and a process. Okay. Now, how many of you guys here are solopreneurs? <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> how many of you guys work with a team or have a team under you? A few of you. Okay. All right, good. So the true business definition, I heard it from Dan Locke years ago, and I've thought a lot about it. A business isn't a profitable enterprise that works with or without you. That works as well for nonprofits. Okay, so the key point of this is the without. If you want to build a business, you need to have it run without you because the value of your business is obviously the revenue and the profits it brings in, but to somebody buying it, it's the certainty of that revenue. And if, you're, if they're buying it from you, you're not going to be there. Okay? So it's one of the things to think about is you're a solopreneur, but where, where do you want, how, how do you want to exit this? Because at some point in your life, you're going to exit your business. You could close it down, you could sell it, give it to your kids or whatever. But if you really want to build a business, I'm assuming most of you do, that's why you're here spending a lot of time, then you're going to want to think about how to get it to work pretty well, you know, without you. It takes a long time, but it, it can be worth it. So why outsource? This is the way, you know, all the marketing charts and sales charts and all this stuff go. Your business on an upward traje trajectory, um, revenue, profit, whatever. What you expect in the future is it's going to keep going up, okay? how we plan, we think we're going to live forever, all that stuff. Okay. Now to get it to go up, here's some possibilities. You're going to have to get more clients, better clients, new services, new products, raise pricing. The thing is though, is all of those things are going to, going to require time or they have limits to them. For example, more clients, I mean you can only handle so many clients, right? Um, raising, raise pricing. You can't, you, it's hard to charge $100,000 for a website. There's a few out there that very few that you could do, right? I'm guessing most of the people in this room aren't going to charge that. I don't, certainly don't charge that. So you can only raise pricing so much. So the question ends up being, how do you continue to grow? So we talked about your business, what you expect to go up. But what can happen is you get a disruption, all right? Especially if you're a solopreneur on your own, you get a disruption. What could those be? Well, 
It's my wife down here. We're in an emergency room. And you know, I, I've been married 35 plus years. You saw that. One of the reasons is because I ask ahead of time if I could do something like this, show her in, laying in the emergency room. She said, she said, yeah, but don't count on 36 years of marriage. No. <laughs> so two weeks ago, yesterday, we were in the emergency room, room, Hoke Hospital, Irvine. She ended up having an emergency appendectomy that night. Okay. And if you're married, um, you're going to be the primary caretaker for your spouse, or that could be you. Okay, so what's going to happen to your clients? What's going to happen to your business if something like this happens? Because it will happen at some point. It happens to everybody. Now, if they had decent Wi-Fi here, I could keep up on stuff, but there's no way that I could concentrate and really develop a lot of a lot of you know high-level sites or, or, or whatever, right? And I was very distracted. So we talked about a potential medical issue that could have to be a, uh, being a disruption in your business. You want to take a vacation, right? And, but you still want to have the income coming in, right? You could get burnout for a while. You could say, oh my gosh, I'm just so tired of all these clients. I got to take a break. I don't know if that's ever happened to any of you. Yeah, there you go. Happens. It does happen. Um, you could have an accident. Family requirements. That's my wife. Could be your kids. Could be your elderly parents. This is something that happens. Um, or say you just want to volunteer. You want to volunteer and speak at a word camp someday, right? This takes time. You got to plan your business so you still have income enough to handle that. All right. <clears throat> great quote by Steve Jobs. Great things in business are never done by one person. They're done by a team of people. So it depends upon you. Do you want to do great things with your life and with your business? Do you want to really make a big difference um, to people in their businesses? You know, you think about, I mean, for me, one of the things is when I do somebody's website and, it, and it, they love it and everything, they're proud of it. I mean, that makes me feel good. Part it, partly that, but the other thing is I know that that's a 24-7 salesperson. That's right there for them. Hopefully bringing in them in money, but at least giving them leads or whatever, 24-7, okay? So, build a team. How are we going to do this? Build a team fulfills the true defini definition of a business, you build your team right, you can, um, you know, then you can take some time off, all right? It allows for expansion, mitigates the impact of life events, and it will give you a life. Okay? Question is how? How do we afford it? And where are you going to start? If you're even thinking about this, because at some point, even if you're new to WordPress, you're just here for the first time ever, you're just learning, you're going you're gonna to get to a point where you're pretty good at it, right? It's not going to take five years plus like it took me. You guys are probably going to do it you know, a lot quicker. So you may want to you know, expand and do more. Serve more people. Serve more clients. So where are you going to start? How do you manage that team and thrive? How do you manage yourself? So the question is, what's the right process? Okay, so a lot of stuff that I'm going to talk about here today works with anybody doesn't matter what part of the country uh, what part of the world that they're from it works with anybody if you're hiring somebody local from another country okay so one of the things you look at this global map is these are approximate monthly salaries of um, virtual assistants all in the range of like a general developer etc okay so you can see US is around uh, 50,000 a year 4,000 a month Australia is more. They should be less. They're down under, right? I don't know why there's so much. Um, but then you can see the different um, amounts. India, 800. I've been to India a few times, worked with those guys and, and gals very closely. Um, it's great. Philippines, 400 a month. Well, can we target them? Um, in fact, that's what we, one of the things that we do. Um, some of the advantages of the Philippines are they work hard, they speak English really well, which is an issue on some of the other countries. Uh, they're very family oriented. They, they want to have some stable income. They want to be with you for a while. Okay, so there's some really good advantages with them. And plus, when you think about it, they're about a tenth of the cost of what it would cost somebody here local. Okay. 
So here's a few monthly salaries average. So you see the number there on the left is kind of the average, and then there's a range. Obviously, that range is going to be based upon um, their expertise, their experience. Okay. So a general VA, 500. SEO expert, 600. Average graphic designer, 640. Now again, there's a, a wide range. Web designer is that much. Um, video editor, copywriter. And yes, you can get quality people doing all of these things. Um, one of the ladies on our team that works for us sometimes is she does um, blog writing for us. She's really good. And, and one of the things to think about too is that as you outsource to anybody um, here, wherever, a lot of times it's not going to get to be like 100% the way you want it. And that's okay. If they can get you, say, you know, 90% of the way there, that saves you just a ton of time and effort. Okay. And I'll talk a little bit about one of the big advantages that you get once you start outsourcing where, anywhere. So uh, the young lady on the left, she's my general virtual assistant. She's been, her name's Daphne. She's been with me for almost four years now. Um, she's, she's, she's awesome. And this guy here is Brian, and he's been with me almost three years. He's my developer. He uh, does some stuff that I can't do. And I do stuff that he can't do. So we're a good team. So just to give you an example of some of the things on, of Daphne's recent work here. She's done site maintenance for me, um, preparing um, uh, monthly reports that we have for our clients. She's entered blog posts provided by a client, done them, gotten them done out, out of the way. She's designed sample pages um, for a client as well. She designs, she actually does our websites, our, our design. Much better than me. Um, she's done competitive analysis for me, right? I'm thinking about offering up a new service. That's an important thing. If you want your um, new service or your new product to be successful, you need to do a competitive analysis. You need to know, to know what everybody's doing out there. Um, she did, she did graphics for our website. She actually created this slide deck, okay? Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Robot Ninja. Every, every, you guys have heard that at all? Okay, one guy. It's a, it's, there's a free version that gives you a pretty um, decent amount of weekly testing of a WooCommerce site. If there's something that's wrong, they'll email you. It's, it's a nice free tool. And it costs if you want to have them do the whole thing. But if you're going to have a major WooCommerce client, um, buy, get the, the uh, pay for it. But if not, even um, um, you know, for anybody, just it, it gives you at least a little bit of confidence that that WooCommerce site is is working well. Because that's a uh, yeah WooCommerce. You got to make sure that that's working well. Because if it doesn't, if there's a problem, that affects uh, your client's income. That's and that's important, okay? Um, yeah, when I say 2x, she's done it twice. Um, she's tested opt-ins on our website. You guys make sure that you have those so you can capture leads, capture um, people coming in. I think there's some talks about that too. Um, she's compared reports for a couple of maintenance services like the reports we get from WPMU or iThemes uh, Sync. Uh, she's compared those. She's filtered through, so we have one client that we're doing the website now for that's, they gave us, we asked for a bunch of pictures, they gave us like 200, which is awesome, but what do we use on the site? So I say, Daphne, go filter these, see what you think, because you did the overall um, uh, design from a graphics perspective, why don't you go through and look at some of those pictures and tell me which ones you want, then we can have the client rename them appropriately so that when we upload them, they're they automatically get the alt tags for a proper SEO, okay? All right, so like I said, for any VA you want to get, or just anybody um, that you have on your team, you've got to do a process of preparation, and typically that will, you'll go through that once. Um, then you're going to want to hire and then thrive. A lot of people end up just saying, I want to hire somebody. Right? I got to get somebody. I know what I need. I want to get somebody. They forget about how to make this relationship thrive and they forget to prepare themselves to understand what they really, really need. Okay? We're going to talk about all three of those real quick. 
All right, so prepare. A lot of that preparation is about yourself, right? You want to discover your strengths, the way that you naturally work um, and that gives you energy, etc. You want to discover your personality. Ideally, you create your vision and your mission. Your vision is the desired end state. An example is clean water for everybody, right? Something like that. You know, and then creating your mission, why you exist. I mean, on the hundreds, thousands of developers and companies out there, why are you doing what you're doing? Right? And it's, it, and it's really important because once you create these things, it helps you through the tough times which are going to come. When you don't feel like doing it, you know, when the, the, the client calls and complains or whatever, you got to go back and say, why in the heck am I still doing this stuff? Hopefully that vision and mission you create is um, pretty compelling for you. You also want to create your core values. If you're going to build a team, and I suggest doing it early, even before you're going to build your team, create a, your core values. How, um, how are you going to govern what you do with your clients, with yourself, right? Once you do that, then that's, that's incredibly important um, to create the culture in your business. So knowing yourself and what you're trying to build is foundational. Culture is critical. If you don't build it intentionally in your business right now, whoever you bring on in the future, they're going to be the ones that are going to create it. Or your customers are going to create it for you. You've got to decide what do you want in your culture. Do we have access to this? Yes. Yeah. All of these, I'll give you the link at the very end okay. for all the slides. Yeah, help with that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, for example, um, the core values that I have in my business are um, grace, greatness, growth, grins, because we like to have fun, right? And, um, geez, I've forgotten them myself. What's the last one? Oh, genuine. Then, I'm, by the way, I review this with my team every week, not just for them, but for me. <laughs> so, genuine. We want to be genuine. We want to be authentic with our clients. Okay. So here's a vision example. Is this is what ours is? I drew it myself. <laughs> Great book, Draw to Win. Great book. I'm still going through it. So hopefully you kind of get the idea. Ball and chain. Here's a person going upstairs for his potential. Every entrepreneur free to unleash their true potential. That's a vision. That's what we want to see. It's what I want to see as the um, CEO of my business. And so by knowing that, it governs um, the things that I do. For example, every entrepreneur free to unleash their true potential by me presenting this stuff to you guys that I'm, I'm hoping to help be able to unleash your potential. Because your potential is a lot more than doing a website on your own. It really is, okay? And maybe that's all you want, and that's cool. But you just have to decide where you want to go. So, preparation. Um, one of the, the best things to do is, I've got my journal over there. But I write down, oh, that's okay, thanks. <laughs> um, I just write down all the stuff that I do every day. Check them off, you know. I'm a sucker for a to-do list, and I like the emotional feeling of, Ooh, check that off. Yeah, it's done. Um, so you write down everything that you do, and you should be doing. So I can go back and look at that stuff. And then you, what you do is uh, map it to the next page. Okay, so what that does is get you on the road to um, developing a base requirements for um, getting a virtual assistant. So here's the virtual freedom exercise template inspired by Chris Ducker. So the first one is... You write down everything I hate doing or don't like to do or what drives me nuts. You guys probably have a few of that, a few of those things in your business. I'm going to have to go over here. I can't read it. So, blog post formatting. And I just write in what I'm doing about it here. I did this a little bit ago. So Daphne's doing it. Blog post picture creation and formatting. Getting it the right size, making it look good. Ah, I don't know about you guys. I hate social media. I just, I hate it. And I, I still have an issue. I, I, I got to get on social media. I just got to. Uh, preparing email, marketing emails. She's doing, she's doing that. I write it out. 
and then she, she prepares it so it looks good. Okay, the next column is what I don't know how to do or can't do or things that could be completed faster by someone else or wrapped up better by someone else or am I cutting costs by dabbling outside of my expertise? You guys are all smart people, I'm really smart. We can all do anything. But should we do everything, right? So graphic editing, uh, I can do okay at that, but I'm never gonna get to be on a scale of uh, zero to 10 to be a 10, that's just not, gonna, that's just not me. All right, so I have Daft doing it. Java, uh, JavaScript, for whatever reason I don't do well, I do PHP, CSS, HTML is great. Facebook ad management, if I wanna do that. Complex plugins, I mean I'm okay, but it's just not the great, I'm not the greatest. So everything I feel I should not be doing, that's the third column. What do you feel like you should not be doing? I wrote down working on an hourly basis all the time, making sure that I, I do service-based packages and stuff. Check, checking and scheduling social media, all right? Um, and there's other things that I can delegate. You know, my accountant work, I've done a little bit of that. Legal stuff. I shouldn't be like searching the web, looking for contracts, all that kind of stuff. It's just, it's just silly for me to do that. So I actually have an outside service to do that for. So the idea then is, so that's, that's the first row. The next in your preparation time is you want, to do th you want to look at what you want to do more of. What I like to do, what gives me energy, what I do that puts me into a zone. What makes you guys, um, you're sitting down doing something and you haven't gone to the bathroom for half a day or you forgot to eat. What, is, what are those things? That's what, one of the things you want to do more of, right? So for me, I love to learn. I love you know, just general website work. I love collaborating with my team and solving a problem. Um, putting our website together, we did it last late yesterday afternoon. Uh, my, Brian, my developer, and I, we were together on a Zoom call for four hours, dividing and conquering and just getting it all done. Um, I do love to code certain areas, right? So what am I good at? In other words, what is it that I play at that other people have to work at? Okay, what kind of comes naturally to me, right? And so I have a few things. I love systems, etc. Recording out to videos, that's fun, right? Um, but then what I really should be doing as a business owner or in my position, that's, that's a very important thing to, to make sure that you have a handle on, right? So as a business owner, there's a big part of what you need to do in sales and marketing. Doing, and what I should do is come up with better systems, tracking finance and all that kind of stuff, right? Measuring things. Creating new and better offers, products, executing ideas, negotiating deals, public speaking. From the owner, I really should be doing that. Um, okay, here's a blank template that you can, you can grab once you get the slides. <clears throat> okay, so then when you hire, some of this is obvious, right? You're gonna post an application, but some things that aren't as obvious is you wanna filter people, right? You make them jump through a few hoops. Okay, because they're right, especially now, a lot of people will look at an application, they'll just throw stuff in there. Let me give you one hint, is what we did with our application, our recent one, is we told them at the very bottom of the application, and this is where my developer, he had that idea, uh, Brian, at the very bottom of the application, we said, if, you, if you're interested in this, put the word Batman in the subject line. About half of the people responded, no Batman. That's so funny. Yeah. So it's like, if I'm going to hire somebody, do I want attention to detail. They're not going to read the whole thing. Like, why do I want to talk to them? Why do I want to consider them? Okay. Um, so interviewing. Obviously, you're going to interview. You need to do two ways, right? One is skills-based and one is behavioral. Any of you guys have heard of behavioral interviewing before? Okay. Anybody want to say what it is, if they recall? I know I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> so the idea... The, the, oh, sure. Well, to some yeah. extent, you need to trust your gut, and you need to know if you click with the person and if they're going to match with your team. Well, and that's, and that's, yeah, that's part of it. That's part of it. Well, what, what behavioral interviewing does is it, it's a way of predicting how, how they do something in the past is the way that they're going to do it in the future. So you might ask them a question is, tell me about a time in your life, in your work or whatever, where you've solved a difficult problem. Describe to me all the steps that you do, right? And then a lot of times they'll say, well, here's what I would do if I had a problem, I'd do this and this. And you say, no, 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 no. Tell me about a specific time, all the things that you did. 
right? Because if they behave that way in the past, it's very, very, very likely they'll do it that way in the future. Okay? Yeah, I mean, that, that's great. Tell me about a time, right? Give me an example. You always ask for that. Um, so then there, there's three, this is from uh, my business partner, Larry. There's three things you want to consider when you're hiring somebody. Motivation, integrity, and capacity. You look at the center of that. You want to make sure that they've got all three. So for an example, if they have motivation and a lot of capacity, ability to do a lot of work, but they don't have integrity, guess what? They're going to screw you over, right? If they have integrity and a lot of capacity, but they have no motivation, mm, you know, they, they just won't execute, right? Even though they have the capacity, okay? So you need all three of these together. So capacity, we're going to talk about this a little bit. Uh, I'll start over here. <clears throat> so vertical axis is their skill level. Horizontal is time. This is just an example of a day, 60, day 60. When they start off working for you, day zero, there'll be initial skills. Now we're going to talk about like how much work they can get done in the area in the graph, but at day zero, one person has this level of skills that you need. The other has this level. Okay, now ideally you want the highest skill level, but it may not necessarily be true. So they start off this level. So you have somebody that maybe not have as much capacity, person A, but at day 60 they're here and they're going up and they're improving their skills. But if you hire somebody that may not have as many skills at the beginning, but a lot of capacity, month, two months or whatever, they're going to out, they're going to exceed what the other person can do. Okay. So when you're hiring, um, it's, it's the capacity because, I mean, if you think about it, you hire somebody who's got, who's, who's brilliant, you know, but they don't know HTML. This is an extreme example, but they don't know HTML. How long do you think it'll take them to really learn it and become pretty good at it, right? A few weeks, but if they're, if they're brilliant, <clears throat> okay? Sometimes, sometimes clients will make the mistake of saying, I need expertise in a page builder. I need expertise in Elementor or Beaver Builder. Well, it, that probably doesn't really matter as long as you may have some experience in a page builder. You can, you can catch up and get the other one pretty quick. Okay, so then when you hire somebody VA, you make sure you have them sign a contract so that they understand what they're doing. Now, it's not going to be enforced. You're not going to enforce it if something goes bad. Nobody's going to sue anybody, but it just sets the expectation up front that you're serious about your business. You're serious about the relationship, managing it, having it start um, off on the right foot, okay? Um, and the first couple of weeks are critical, okay? So when you're hiring somebody, you wanna blow the whistle early and hard. In a way, um, it's, it's, it's kinda like raising kids in, all, in, in certain aspects. Um, this is a picture of a soccer referee. I was a soccer referee for five years because I had no idea what soccer was like, the rules. When my kids were in it, I said, oh, I better learn it. That's the best way to learn it, being a ref, right? So what I, but one of the things that I learned is at the beginning of a match, beginning of the match, you know, there's these, these especially the guys, as they get older, they can get pretty rough. They can get pretty um, mean with each other. So what I did is as soon as a little blow on the whistle, they started uh, with the ball. As soon as I saw any little tiny infraction that would not affect an advantage, give them an advantage either way, one little tiny infraction, I'd blow the whistle. It's probably a Fox 40 whistle. It's loud as heck. And I'd blow it and they'd get, ow! And I'd say, all right, watch it. You don't want to hear it anymore. Don't do it this way. And it helped the entire match, okay? So that's what you want to do when you're managing a person, a new, new person that comes on. Watch close. Okay, <clears throat> thrive. 
One of the things that you're going to do as a leader, and you're a leader in any er so many areas of your life, with your family, where you volunteer, you're, you're a leader. There's no question about it, right? You're a leader in your business. You're leading your clients, right? You want to be clear on, but within your team, you want to be clear on the priorities, okay? You, um, working as an uh, engineer in a semiconductor company, I remember some of our bosses, I'd say, you know, what, are you, you've, you've assigned us these five programs. What's the highest priority? Guess what he would say? All of them. Well, what was he doing? He was abdicating his leadership responsibility and putting it on me to decide what was the highest priority. All right? So you don't want to do that as a leader because otherwise your VAs are going to decide that. All right? You want to gradually increase trust. You, I mean, you think about, can you imagine giving somebody, especially even from another country or another part of, the, the, um, part of this country or anywhere else, Root access to your server? <laughs> Yikes. So there's times when you, you do that. I've done that. Um, our developer has it now. But he's been with me for you know, three years, right? So you gradually increase trust. Well, we had a client who, um, for whatever reason, she hired a new, new uh, developer, her first time ever, ever. And she gave him her login ID, her user ID, and her password to a couple of sites. And I'm like, why would you ever do that? I couldn't figure that out. I, I, just, I still can't uh, to this day. But she did that, and it's, it's okay right now. It's turned out okay because she went and hired the person who's, who's got a lot of integrity. So she, she took care of that, but everything is fine. But you want to gradually increase trust, and you want to communicate often. We have a weekly meeting with our team. You want to do that in any business. Sometimes it may be necessary to do a daily meeting, a, a little scrum, stand up. Um, you want to give and receive feedback. Okay, you want to obviously say how um, things are going well, not maybe not quite so well, but you want to be open and let them give you feedback because we all need to improve. If we have time at the end, I'll give you two questions that you can use to improve yourself in um, in any way. Any, in any phase of your life, I'll give you two questions. Question will be, though, for you is would you have the courage to ask those? So remind me of that at the end. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thrive. Continuous training, right? You guys are here. Awesome. It's what you should be doing. Continuous training. Your uh, assistants have to be trained as well, right? Things are changing very, very quickly. Anybody here was uh, very happy with uh, Gutenberg and all that stuff that rolled out? Well, that, yeah, that, that, that was a change. Happened pretty quick. Um, and then if you are running any kind of a business, you need to record videos on everything because the, um, the attitude you want to have is you want to act as if you want to hire 50 people tomorrow and have them productive right away, right? Because if you're going to go down the road of hiring somebody, they can leave, right? They can get sick. <coughs> and you want to be able to get somebody up to speed as quick as possible. Plus, if you're building a business and you want to have a good exit plan someday, you've got to have this as, it's really uh, intellectual property, documenting your process um, and your, um, the way to do things. Because then you could sell your business and somebody else could pick it up pretty quickly. It's val there's value there. <clears throat> okay, you want to spend time um, on your business. Take a look at the E-Myth. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that at all. Okay, great book. I can't remember the author, um, but it's awesome. Um, it talks, the talks about the difference between working in your business and on your business. Okay, I'll give you a little hint here coming up. All right, we're almost done. So this came from uh, Brian Schur, and I had Daphne create this nice meme for me so I could remember it. So the entrepreneur of golden rule, never do anything you can pay someone else less money to do. But what does that really mean? It means only spend time developing and refining your systems and generating, generating revenue through sales and marketing systems, right? And systems are training others to do things that are paid less than you through checklist procedures, training, and practice slash role playing. Don't get caught up in the trap of trying to do it all yourself and thinking you're saving money because you're not. You're not. If you, if you can shift between editing CSS on your site all of the time, 
changing it versus deciding what and working on um, a new product in your in your business that's going to get you more revenue and help you as your company make a bigger difference out there all right so the one takeaway for you guys to have on this is that's why i ended started and ended with this business is a profitable enterprise if i can say that business is a profitable enterprise that works with or without you otherwise you've really got a job and that may be okay or it may not be okay it's just important for you to have the self-awareness of what you want to do there's the slides hiremyva.com slash wcscv that's one thing to write down <clears throat> and you can contact me there um, my company is pro website creators for a web development you can contact me there as well and that's it we are almost 1140 questions I'm back what's been your experience uh, for hiring or outsourcing for like, website translation uh, website translation to different languages right I have none um, Wow would that be like when you say website translation would that be in a specific language yeah, or all of them Yeah, I would for well, it depends it depends amount uh, on when if you're talking about website translation it depends upon how often I think you're going to do it. The way I would approach it is if this is like a one-time shot for a client, Elance, well, not Elance, but whatever the a, a job outsourcing thing, I'd do something like that. But if it's something that you're saying, okay, we've got a client who needs this site translated into um, Spanish, right? But we do one of those every month or whatever, it may be worth it. Um, but you'd probably want to have to supplement that with may not just be the website, but it could be translation of marketing material or email follow-ups, all that kind of stuff too. So I think it depends upon how often you do it, if the language is going to be the same every time. I know there's translation plugins um, that can be done for websites, and they do they do decent. The technical side isn't the hard part. Okay. It's actually getting the people you know, that, are, that are good, that you can trust. That yeah. Like, and then it's the translation, so if someone's translating Chinese, I can't be Chinese, you know? Yeah, so... How am I, I going to validate that it's like good Chinese? So yeah, in that case, you would have to, if you're going to validate in a language that you don't speak or not familiar with, then you'd have to hire one person that seems pretty good but you've got to find somebody else to do a check until you until you trust because you're right you really don't know you don't know so you've really got to do a, a two uh, two fa uh, two phase kind of um, validation and there's and there's lots of there's lots of kids at schools who speak different languages especially I mean you live in the place where you can probably find somebody uh, you know within a few miles to speak of any language you know it's out there. Is it, uh, up, it's called Upwork? <clears throat> Upwork, yeah. It, it's called Upwork, and then they have a bunch of people you can hire in different languages, and they have references, and yeah. you can bid um, for different people. Yeah, and you could, and, and well, like we are talking about, you could hire two different people and see how they translate it. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so I have a great contact for you. Um, but I do have a question for you. Do you require your virtual assistants to sign non-compete or commitment agreements so that you don't find, for example, someone taking on two or right. three different jobs? How do, you, how do you handle that? Yeah, you can't prevent it. There's no way to prevent it. Mm -hmm. But what we say up front is we want, depending upon what you're doing, we, we advocate um, hiring full-time. The reason is because if somebody's part-time, then they've got likely more than two clients. 
and then guess who's going to get the most energy and effort? The client that screams the loudest. So well, we, we, we talk about hiring part-time only if you're really confident that that's an exclusive part-time work. Like, like Daphne for me, she first started at 20 hours. That's all she wanted to work. Now she's like 30 hours, so she's not totally full-time, but we're exclusive. And so that's one of the things that you want to emphasize to people that you hire as a virtual assistant because of that, you know, you're competing with another person. But you, you, know, you can't prevent them from doing something else on the other side. Uh, on the side. Um, hopefully if they do something on the side, you know, maybe it is building their own business doing something else that wouldn't necessarily compete with you, but um, in that case, hopefully you hire somebody that is you know, pretty open with you and you would encourage them to talk about it because maybe you want to help them as a, as a business owner. I mean, why not? Go ahead. Um, what tools do you use for communication? Like, do you use Slack or Lightning? And then how do you, um, um, do you hem how do you handle working with someone who's in a completely, you know, opposite time zone in your home okay. where it's really difficult to, you know, get, get a time when you're both awake? Well, good question. So it's tools and time zone. Yeah. So tools is um, a lot of the people we work with use um, Trello for the task management type of thing, and then Slack for daily communication. And there's probably other ones out there. That's what most people do. They're, they use the free versions. Uh, we use Basecamp because Basecamp is more of an all-in-one. You have different projects, and um, you can do your chat and all that. And then as far as um, um, communication goes, we use um, Zoom for our calls. Um, we get on. Uh, um, and you can use Skype. A lot of people use Skype. And then the, the other question was about the hours. Um, believe it or not, there are people that do their best work in the evenings or very early in the mornings. Um, some people, like in, if you're on the East Coast, it's like the Philippines, it's basically 12 hours. That's tough. But um, what you have to decide up front is what overlap do you want? Like for me, we've recent, and it's a, an adjustment process. Like for Brian, he was um, falling asleep sometimes um, because he was working in the middle of the night. And it wasn't just that. It didn't happen at the beginning, but he had other things going on in their life, in his life, that he had to deal with during the day. Um, so we changed it to um, our, he starts at 2 p.m., approximately 2 p.m. our time, and works till, um, I, I tell him I want 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. to be the minimum overlap times. The rest of the time, just work whatever you want. Are there any other uh, systems that you put in place to vet who you're hiring? Yeah, so um, like we use uh, onlinejobs.ph. That's what we use a lot. But you, um, sometimes you can use Virtual Staff Finder. There's other ones out there. Uh, but one of the first things we do is um, they send us an email, right? Say it has Batman in the subject line. Or we change it to Superman. Pick your favorite comic character, right? Um, and they do that, right? And then I respond with them and I say, okay, here's my key requirements. Are you okay with that? Meaning, overlap these hours. This amount of pay range. Um, daily reporting. And we might have something else in there too. Communication with Zoom or whatever, right? And if they respond, yes. Well, I'm okay with that. All right, good. Then we look and see what, their, what the salary is that they wanted on their um, profile. Because sometimes they'll say the salary is okay, but if the salary that they have on their profile that they want way exceeds what I can offer, then we may talk to them, but that goes on the back burner because what I'm afraid of is that if somebody um, takes the job because you know they need jobs over there, somebody takes the job, but then on the side they're going to be looking for somebody else to pay them more, right? And so they may leave quick. So I don't want to have that happen. But that would be. But if their qualifications are great still may interview them and try to understand why. Because sometimes they'll put that in there thinking, well, I just want to get that much, but I don't have to have that much. Good questions. Go ahead. So in this scenario of like hiring, hiring a remote work, would, would it be appropriate to ask one of these, you know, someone to do like a developer test of some sort? Mm -hmm. like, 
Yeah, just to, just to see that they can actually do it. Yeah, so, so here's the thing is, the way you want to test is, <clears throat> I mean, ideally you don't want to test, you don't want to test on things that are going to happen. I have a disagreement with this with some folks, but it's like a website goes down, you have, you know, 500 internal server, right? Well, oh, can you debug that and find out what's wrong? Well, <clears throat> I mean, that, that is a test in a way, but how often does that really happen to somebody? I don't want to base my decision on ha may having them complete a task that's rarely going to happen, right? Or um, that they can search and find the solution pretty quick. I mean, I want to base it on, do you know, here's, here's, here's a side note. Um, I mean, I've taken a bunch of different courses on programming language and stuff. So many of them make the, here's the biggest mistake that I think that they all make in those courses. And if you're going to take a course, look for this. They don't teach you how to debug. The first thing that they should do is say, here's how to do something, but when something goes wrong, like we talked about leaving out a semicolon or putting the, you know, the, 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 the apostrophe, right? How do you figure that out, right? How do you, do you have a way to step through the code to see what line it is, right? I told you I did some iOS apps. They're, the Apple tools are brilliant in that. You know, you step through your code and see what's wrong. So, um, so that's what you want to try to um, understand how they think through things and how they can figure it out. And you can, when you're giving them a skills test, ask them to do whatever you want. And then you might ask them to um, say, okay, take five minutes or ten minutes to search the web and find it. Because that's, that's what's practical, right? It's not necessarily what they remember at the time because... They, they did it three years ago, it might, it's more like how fast can you figure out the solution and get it, and get it done. But yeah, it's totally appropriate. Um, like we had one person who applied for a job who didn't even know how to use at all, or didn't even know it was available, the debugger in the browser. I mean, they didn't even know how to right click and do inspect and to be able to use that. Well, to me, that's like, wow, that was pretty basic. So. They were no. All right, we've got time for one more question. Okay, yeah. one more. Go ahead. So, uh, excellent presentation. Lots of great points. And it sounds like you've had an, you know, an exceptional experience by outsourcing. I've had exactly the opposite. Okay. Nothing but failures. Okay. okay. Not on people that I have vetted or hired, but I've had clients come to me and say, we have this fellow that updates our website. He's disappeared. Mm -hmm. Yep. I've had a psychotic breakdown <coughs> by mm -hmm. one of the guys. They're running into a forest, never to be seen again. <laughs> Another one was an unconvicted murderer who ended up oh. confessing to the death of his sister. I mean, I can do, you know, I've well, been to walk, and I have, so yeah. I don't do any outsourcing now. Okay. My clients <coughs> get fed up with it, and they come to me and say, this guy's disappeared. He's just left the planet. We need to mm -hmm. update our website, mm -hmm. and then I take over the site. Yep. Extracting the responsibility of editing a site from somebody who is 7, 10, 12 time zones away can take a lot of time. So be very careful if you choose to do this, folks, and vet these people significantly. Yep. Then that's they why... looked really right. good up front, and then the whole thing just went to slide. And that's why most of the time, when people try to find people like that, they'll skip, remember those, those, that Venn diagram, right? They'll skip that motivation and integrity part, right? When we've had clients come to us, it's like, you know, my developer skipped out on me. So, that, so that's a, that, those are great points. Here's another great point, though. It happens here as well, anywhere. My wife, um, she works at a nonprofit, the leading nonprofit, education nonprofit in California, third ranked in the country as far as um, revenue, and she had an executive assistant. Um, was working out great. Do you remember the, um, it, it didn't turn out this bad, but remember the Las Vegas shooting a year, year and a half ago? She was there. She was running, and somebody got shot next to her. All right? So she ended up get, having post-traumatic stress and having to take time off. A significant time off, and then she eventually left. She just wasn't it was hard for her to get the same. My wife, you know, they have, and we live in Irvine, right? And there are people that are sick like crazy right now. 
I mean, it's just, it's just people. It's just life. It really is sometimes hard to find really good people. Um, my brother-in-law works for Federal, Federal Express. He has worked for them for 40 plus years. He has cases, uh, he, um, he used to train, be a station manager and train people. He's in HR now. But he has, um, sit, they've had situations where they'd hire somebody, train them for six or eight weeks to drive a truck and deliver. But then something would happen. And then what they would do, middle of the day, pull the, pull the truck onto the side, pull out the key, give them a call and say, I put your key over here, I'm quitting. Right? Nice. Right? <laughs> so, yeah, I, 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 I hear what you're saying. Outsourcing is not for the faint of heart. It isn't. But, it does take some time, but it depends upon what you want to do. Right? Um, I want to produce amazing results for my clients. I want to produce um, great websites. I want to expand my capability. I need help. Um, in what I do. I am, I, I'm weak in so many areas. I want to create a team that, that, that can do um, amazing stuff. And, and we do. We do. But, but like you said, it has taken me some time. The first developer I hired, oh my gosh, he, he just took forever to do things. It finally took me a while to let him go. Did you disclose to your USA clients that you were using individuals in other countries? No. no. See, that's, that's a legal liability issue. I don't know why. Let me tell you. <laughs> 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 well, he took down the site and he's holding it hostage. Where is he? Pakistan. Well, um, well, I didn't choose somebody in Pakistan. You did. They can't go to Pakistan and sue that person, so they come to you. It happens all the time. Well, the other thing, too, is <clears throat> you, that can, you've heard of all the stuff about people taking Twitter accounts down within companies that exist in the United States as well. Right? So that can happen with anybody that you hire, number one. Number two, you have to gradually increase trust with people. Number three is you need to make sure you've got good backup solutions so those types of things um, really can't happen. Now, anytime you are going to give up control, if you want to build a business, there's no question that there is a risk that somebody could really screw you over. There's that risk, but it just depends upon what you want to do, right? Do you want to build a business that makes a big difference for clients that um, you may have a problem here and there, but, and I know there's stories out there of all that stuff happening, but I tell you, the difference that some of this stuff is making to some of our clients, the people that we've worked with, I mean, it's freeing up their lives to be able to do other things. We have a one, one lady who just helped to get a developer she has a small, small son who's going to get pregnant again. She needs somebody to help her while she's going through all that. Um, and so for me, those are risks I want to take. There's risks everywhere. Just getting in your car driving. You may get hit by a drunk driver, right? But you don't not drive. There's risks in everything you want to do. You want to, you want to build a great business. You want to be a great person. You want to do amazing things for your clients. I mean, there's a risk. <laughs> What Absolutely. What are you going to do to your, what is your client going to say when you're, you're in the hospital because of an appendectomy and they need a change on their site? That's not going to go well. What are your two questions you talked about at the beginning? Oh, I'm glad you reminded me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we should probably be done. We'll end with this, okay? All right. Uh, two questions. Now, you have to have the courage to do this. That'll help you in any relationship that you have. Okay, the first question, this came from Jack Canfield. First question is, uh, what's your name? Oren Belgrade. Oren, nice to meet you. All right, so imagine that um, I'm your boss, all right? So Oren, I ask you, I'm your boss. I say, Oren, I really need you to give me an honest answer to this because if you don't give me an honest answer to these two questions, it's not going to help me, okay? Would you do that for me, Oren? Sure. All right, so on a scale of zero to 10, how would you rate me as a boss? 10 being best boss in the entire world, Zero being worst. And I need you to be honest. There's no repercussions or anything. I need you to be honest. How would you rate me? Well, I can't rate you because you haven't, I haven't seen you, your capabilities are. Give me, give me a seven. 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 Okay, great. Okay, great. <laughs> I'm a seven. I'm a seven. So then, Oren, in your mind, what would I need to do to move from a seven to ten? Bring in more work. Okay, there you go. You can do this with your spouse. 
You can say, like I said, if you have the courage, honey, you know, I really want to be a better husband or I want to be a better wife. How would you rate me as a husband on a scale of 0 to 10? 10 being like, out of this world. <laughs> See what I mean? Do you have the courage to do that? I've done that. But you got to be in, and mentally, you got to be in receive mode to do this. All right? Yeah. Okay. How does taxes work? Taxes work? You, they're, an in, they're an independent, yeah, they're an independent contractor. If they're in, if they're in another country, you don't really need to do like 1099 or anything. It's really for people here. But yeah. <clears throat> so we're going to wrap it? Um, and I'm around at lunch the rest of the day. You want to come? That's a great thing. All right.